Cho Shun for Sam? Me. Oh, I got a kind of a pain in my shoulder. I thought sitting up would rest it. You're a liar. You're afraid. You wished to be burned at sunrise and you was afraid he'd do it. And he would too if he could find a match. Ain't it awful, Sam? Do you think anybody will pay money to get a little imp like that back home? Sam and Bill convinced themselves they have devised a foolproof plan to kidnap the only son of a prominent citizen and hold him for ransom money. The only problem is that young Red Chief refuses to take the role of a kidnapped victim seriously. And nobody seems to be in a hurry to rescue the less than helpless boy. The Ransom of Red Chief by O. Henry, excerpted from Of Places by Abeka Book. We were down south in Alabama, Bill Driscoll and myself, when this kidnapping idea struck us. There was a town down there called Summit. We selected for our victim the only child of a prominent citizen named Ebenezer Dorset. Bill and me figured Ebenezer would melt down for a ransom of $2,000. About two miles from Summit was a cave. There we stored provisions. One evening we drove in a buggy past Dorset's house. The kid was in the street throwing rocks at a kid on the opposite fence. Hey little boy, would you like a bag of candy and a nice ride? The boy catches Bill neatly in the eye with a piece of brick. That will cost the old man an extra five hundred dollars. That boy put up a fight. But at last we got him in the buggy. We took him up to the cave. Ha! Huh, curse pale face! Do you dare to enter the camp of Red Chief to tear on the plains? We're playing Indian. I'm old Hank the Trap Red Chief captive. And I'm to be scoped at daybreak. He immediately christened me Snake on the Spy and announced that I was to be broiled at the stake at the rising of the sun. Then we had supper. He made a during dinner speech something like this. I like this fine. I never camped out before, but I had a pet possum once and I was nine months birthday. Are there any real Indians in these woods? We had five puppies. What makes you know, Sir Red Hank? My father has lots of money. Are the stars hot? Do oxen make any noise? Why are oranges round? Have you gone best to sleep on in this cave? A parrot can talk, but a monkey or a fish can't. How many does it take to make twelve? We went to bed about eleven o'clock. Just at daybreak, I was awakened by a series of awful screams from Bill. Red Chief was sitting on Bill's chest with one hand twined in Bill's hair. In the other, he had this sharp knife we used for slicing bacon, and he was industriously and realistically trying to take Bill's scalp according to the sentence that had been pronounced upon him the evening before. I got the knife away from the kid and made him lie down again. After breakfast, the kid takes a piece of leather with strings wrapped around it out of his pocket and goes outside the cave. What's she up to now? You don't think he'll run away, do you, Sham? No fear of it. He don't seem to be much of a homebody. Just then we heard, whoa, 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 whoa. It was a sling that Red Chief had pulled out of his pocket and he was whirling it around his head. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> a rock the side of an egg and caught Bill just behind his left ear. He loosened himself all over and fell in the fire. I dragged him out and poured cold water on his head. Sham? <laughs> Do you know who my favorite biblical character is? Take it easy, you'll come to your senses presently. King Herod! You won't go and leave me here alone, will you, Sham? I went now and caught that boy and shook him until his freckles rattled. If you don't behave, I'll take you straight home. Oh, behave? If you won't send me home, and if you'll let me play the Black Scout today. I don't know the game. That's for you and Mr. Bill to decide. Now you come in and make friends with him or home you go at once. You won't leave me long with him, will you, Sham? I'll be back sometime this afternoon. And now we'll write the letter to Dorset. Bill begged me to make the ransom $1,500 instead of $2,000. It ain't human for any money to give up $2,000 for that 40 pound chunk of freckle wildcat! So I see it. And we collaborate 
created a letter that ran this way. Ebenezer Dorset, we have your boy concealed in a place far from Summit. The only terms on which you can have him restored to you are these. We demand $1,500 for his return. If you agree to these terms, send your answer in writing by a solitary messenger tonight at half past eight o'clock. If you pay the money, he will be returned to you within three hours. Two desperate men. As I was about to start, the kid comes up to me. Snake Eye, you said I could play the Black Scout when you was gone. Mr. Bill will play with you. What kind of a game is it? I'm a Black Scout and I have to ride to the stockade to warn the sellers that the Indians are coming. All right, it sounds harmless to me. What am I to do? You are the hoss. How can I ride to the stockade without a hoss? How far is it to the stockade, kid? Ninety miles! Whoa now! The Black Scout jumps on Bill's back and digs his heels in his side. I walked over to Poplar Cove, posted my letter, and came away. When I got back to the cave, Bill and the boy were not to be found. In about half an hour, I heard the bushes rustle, and Bill wobbled out. <laughs> Behind him was the kid, with a broad grin on his face. Bill stopped. The kid stopped behind him. <laughs> Sham! The boy is gone. I have sent him home. On his off. What's the trouble, Bill? I was rode the 90 miles to the stockade. Then, when the settlers was rescued, I was given out. Sham ain't a palatable substitute. I tell you, a human can only stand so much. I showed him the road to summit and kept him near there at one kick. I'm sorry we lose the ransom, but it was either that or Bill Driscoll to the madhouse. Bill, there isn't any heart disease in your family, is there? No. Why? Then you might turn around and have a look behind you. I told him that we would get the ransom and be off with it by midnight if Dorset fell in with our proposition. I got the gnome was back in the cave in another half an hour. Two desperate men, I received your letter today in regard to the ransom you asked for the return of my son. I think you are a little high in your demands. And I hereby make you a counter proposition which I am inclined to believe you will accept. You bring Johnny home and pay me $250 and I agree to take him off your hands. Very respectfully, Ebenezer Dorset. Sham, what's $250 after all? We've got the money. You ain't going to let the chance go, are you? We'll take him home. Pay the ransom and make our getaway. It was just 12 o'clock when we knocked at Ebenezer's front door. When the kid found out we were going to leave him at home, he fastened himself to Bill's leg. His father peeled him away. How long can you hold him? I think I can promise you 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, I shall cross the central, southern, and midwestern states <laughs> and be legging and tripping I am. He was a good mile and a half out of summit before I could catch up with him.